This film was made by Sid Atkinson in 1946. It features my father, Dick Farnsworth, training a sheep dog and using it um, on his uh, flock of sheep. This is the cottage in Rycroft Glen where he and Sylvia, my mother, lived from when they were married in 1939 until 1951 when they moved to Rycroft Farm. This was one of the earliest uses of colour film after the Second World War. Sid had to have uh, the film sent to America to be processed as there was nowhere in England where you could get it processed at that time. This is Dick going to have a look at a litter of puppies with Billy Vickers at the farm on Tinker's Corner, Bradway. He's looking at each pup very carefully, trying to pick a, a good strong one, and one which he thinks will have the natural ability to make a good sheepdog. When he's selected one, he then leaves it uh, with the mother for seven or eight weeks until it's large enough to uh, take away from its mother. Sid used to like to intersperse his films with uh, little patches of verse. Rudyard Kipling was one of his favourite authors. Now Dick's got the dog and he's taking it back home to the cottage in the glen. Show it Sylvia and her pet dog Susan. Taking it up in the field for the first time to have a look at the sheep. These are the fields at the cross across at the moss by what's now Worlow playing fields. Pup's getting its first taste of the sheep. It's wondering what they are. He had a flock of about 40 sheep, which we used to keep across at the moss. He'd bring them to Rycroft Farm in the winter and for lambing. These are the fields below the shed at the moss. You can just make out the big house in the background, the moss house that's now been divided up into flats. At that time it was uh, occupied by the Wilson family. You can see his old dog in the background, keeping a fatherly eye on the sheep while he's training his new dog. Pup's still a bit baffled as to what he's supposed to be doing. One of the first things to get the get the pup to lie down when he's told to lie down.
that's very naughty it's getting a good telling off for that it's getting the hang of keeping the sheep together you don't want the sheep all splitting up if you're trying to drive them keep them all together in a bunch Uh, he's matured a bit now, he's turned into a nice looking dog. Just leaving the cottage there to go and round them up. Had a had a gate into the field just at the top of the lawn there. Those are the that's the uh, shed at the bottom of uh, what's now Worlow playing fields. At that time it was still agricultural land. The, uh, it was originally intended to be a golf course before the war. But when war broke out the council put it back with the farm. And he grew cereals over there for several years then grassed it back down, grey sheep on it. He was a very good whistler. And we said the trick was to put the two forefingers in your mouth so that they just touch the, touch the end of your tongue. And uh, oh, he had a magnificent whistle that you could uh, hear half a mile away. Dog there is just going over the wall at the back of the shed. They brought them across to the farm there. You can see the uh, first crop of lambs look about uh, six, seven weeks old. He's just bringing them down the farm lane. There he's driving them round the top end of the house. He used to bring them across to the farm to lamb because of course it was a lot easier to keep an eye on them close to the farmhouse rather than across at the moss. Now he's taking them back to the moss, take them down through uh, the end of the fence at the bottom of the field and then driving them up the glen past the cottage. The dog out staring that sheep there. You've got a sheep that wants to go another way, but the dog shows it who's boss. Bringing another lot back down through the glen. This is the path just below the cottage. It's where it comes down to the bridge where the Ocker stream joins the Lim Brook. That's me with the little lamb that they give me to carry down. I used about four, I should think there. Uh, it's taking them, taking them back in the opposite direction now. I was never quite sure why he always took them this way because there was a gate a bit farther down, but the sheep always seemed to manage to just get round the end of the fence, and then into the bottom field.
can see the black faced lambs there. His main flock of sheep were border Leicesters, but he used to cross them with a Suffolk tup because they always, they always made good crosses. Just getting them in the shed there, give them something to eat and also he can inspect the the lambs and the ewes as well if they need any work doing at the feet or anything. This little lamb kept wandering back out. Dog just gently nudges it back into the place. It's a, it's a brilliant bit of sheepdog work that many dogs would snap at it but he just pushes it back in with his nose. See the lambs are getting pretty big there now. Just rounding them up ready to take them down to the stream to put them through the sheep wash he always used to wash them uh, prior to clipping them because you got you got a few coppers more for a, a washed sheep a washed fleece rather than an unwashed one bringing them down here now the fence just just across the little bridge from the from the shed There's always a bit of a squash getting them in the shed. And again you need a very good dog to keep them in order when there's no fence or anything to, to guide them in when the sheep had when the dog had to just drive the sheep into a a shed door like that. You need an extremely good dog. Getting the sheep to turn round to go the way that the dog wants them to. Because the sheep tend to stand and look at the dog rather than turn round and go in the direction the dog wants them to go in. Yeah, he's getting the last of them in now. Uh, he's got them down to the sheep wash now. He used to dam the stream up just where it ran from the bottom field into the wood. Towers them up and down. That's Thomas Bolton, who uh, looks about 17 or 18 there. Having a bit of a struggle getting a big heavy sheep turned over. Got it in the stream, giving it a good towsing up and down. Looking at the water, I often wonder how much, uh, how effective it was at actually washing the sheet. You think it would end up with as much mud in it as when it started, but he obviously thought it was worthwhile.
when its fleece is full of water it's so heavy poor old sheep had a job to struggle back out of the stream This is back at the cottage, it was a little summer house that he had. Now he's clipping the sheep. This is Ashton Priestley, who he used to farm at Shatton, Bamford. He used to come and help him with the shearing. He and Ashton were big pals, they were, they were both uh, keen competitors in the Longshore Sheepdog Trials. Part of the art of shearing is to get the sheep in a comfortable position so it just lies there. You don't want it jumping and kicking around otherwise you're liable to prick it. Winter time he'd got the sheep back across at the moss. He's taking some turnips up for them. He made this wooden sledge, had an old oil drum and filled it up with turnips and uh, and then took it up the path through the glen that's going past the cottage and then into the field at the moss and up to the shed with them he used to build this little haystack around a tree in the summer and then put a fence around it and then in the winter all he had to do was take the fence back down let the sheep in and the sheep could eat the way through the haystack. As soon as the sheep see him coming of course they know what he's bringing so the whole lot of them chase round after him. Just used to chuck the turnips out for them. That drum of turnips would probably last them two or three days, so he'd have to do, he'd have to do this job at least three times a week. But he'd be going to uh, check them out at least twice a day, because when it was snowing, the sheep had get down under the wall bottom for shelter and then the snow would drift over the wall and bury the bury the sheep and any that couldn't get out you'd have to find them or else they'd, uh, they'd eventually suffocate the dog was very useful because it seemed as if it could smell smell where they were otherwise you have to walk up all the wall bottoms with a stick and keep prodding it Uh, that sheep's looking decidedly the worst for wear. He's taking it in the shed where he can brush the snow off it and give it a bit of hay and get it going again. First time the dog gets a ride on the sledge. <laughs> 